Okay, in this video we're going to go ahead and complete our third problem set. Um, that last video probably should have been split into two sections. I didn't think it would take that long, so apologies for that. Uh, we left off um, problems uh, 6 through 9, or 6 and 9, <clears throat> right? So what is the problem generated the most and least revenue? So what product uh, or... Um, this is not what product, this should be what uh, what month. Which month? I highlighted the wrong thing there. Okay, so number six is, let's scroll back down. So the revenue, this is the correct equation though. <clears throat> We solved the problem, right? That's just it. Just oh, copied and pasted the wrong, uh, the wrong question. So uh, problem six and nine, we went through. We solved it kind of a um, a naive approach, right? Sort of classical Python kind of way. And then uh, we made use of this apply function, which is very powerful, except it can be overused and it's it's not um, particularly fast or efficient. So we want to use um, more pandas ways of doing things when possible, like merging. Um, we want to use pd.merge, so that's what we ended up doing. So for run monthly revenue, we came up with this table. We had an actual revenue, which is the data type of this is uh, a float, right? So this is, um, we can just look at the D types, and, and this is what we sorted on. And then we also had a readable value, which we formatted using that apply function and, and made a, a string, right? So we added a revenue column and then a revenue in a readable format and so we did that for the next two problems which month saw the largest gross profit and what was the value so this is the largest uh, so that is question number seven and smallest this is question number ten and I can go through and go up here. I need to fix that here. So what what month saw the largest? That's number six. And smallest. That's number nine. It's doing a little bit of cleanup here. Because I want to do one more thing with these uh, six questions. All right, so we've got seven and 10 <clears throat> gross profit. So we made a nice little table here. And once we did, you know, the revenue was the hardest one. We had to involve the most number of tables, right? And we were, hit a little snag there and had to work that out. That was the hardest one. Uh, but once you get that, the rest of them are pretty easy. And so seven and 10, um, we just made monthly gross profit function, got that. And then eight and 11 are really easy because this is, we want the largest, which is number eight and the smallest because that is question number 11. Right, so we just make a table, we got our expenses table, and then we could merge. Uh, we got the existing gross profit table, and since net profit is just gross profit, profit minus the expenses, we created a column net profit, and we took uh, gross profits minus the expenses, and then we dropped gross profit and gross profit readable, and then we added a net profit readable. Right, so we've got these three tables. We've got the net profit, the gross profit, and then the revenue tables. Uh, what's nice about pandas is why don't we just put them all into one table and we can answer all the questions kind of in one, all right? So let's do that. I'm gonna hit escape, hit M to make this a markdown cell. We're gonna add a little division. Um, problems 6 through 11 in one table. And so what we want to do here is we've got these three data frames, so let's just merge them together. So we've got data frame 1, pandas.merge. Uh, what's the first data frame? That's our monthly revenues. And we want to merge that with our monthly gross profits. All right. Um, 
what do we want to merge on? Well, they all have the month in the index. So we're going to say um, left index equals true, and then right index equals true. So the index is not technically a column, right? So normally you would say left on, what column are we merging on, and right on. Um, but if you want to merge on an index, then you have to use left index equals true. All right, and then, so this is gonna give us a merge and we can take a look at that, df. All right, pretty good, so we got everything there. And, but that's that's not good enough. We want something better. We want all three of these in one table. So we're gonna merge again, pd.merge. What are we merging? Our current data frame with the last thing. So last thing was net profits. Right, and same thing, left index equals true, right index equals true. All right, let me take a look at that. Pretty good. Now, how do we want this sorted? Probably net profit is the most important thing to business folk. So we'll see uh, um, sort values. And we're going to sort on the net profit column, right? And uh, we want to sort on that and do in place equals true. And then we get DF there again. Okay, so it should be sorted here. And now, now that we've sorted, we don't really need these other values. We've got these readable values and that's what the members of the board want to see or whoever we're presenting to so let's go ahead and drop the columns we don't want so let's drop we're gonna drop revenue we're gonna drop gross profit and we're gonna drop net profit and we're gonna say this is on axis equals one remember uh, the one axis is this way and then the zero axis is this way. So axis one, and let's see, this is in place. All right, so there's our DF. And there, that's problems six through 11 all on one table. Revenue, gross profit, net profit, and all in a readable format. Okay, and it's sorted by the net profit. All right, so these are the things you can do with pandas. This is kind of nice. This is a really good uh, table to look at. And, you know, that's the idea. We have all of this information and we want to kind of, you know, get some, uh, you know, really important data points from, like, this is a small table of information compared to the actual data. We have lots and lots of data, so we want to consolidate all that data into useful data points that we can present. And that's kind of the idea. All right, so let's get to problem set three. We'll try to go faster here since we're kind of used to everything now. Um, so markdown, enter, problem set three. Markdown, enter, problem 12. And this is going to be 12 and 15. So problems, 12 and 15. So just like the last uh, sets of problems, um, these are in pairs because I'm asking for the largest and the smallest. So these problems relate to products and over the course of the entire year. All right, so problems 12 and 15. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at what that is. Let me scroll back to the top where we have our problems uh, outlined. And here we go. Um, so what product generated the most revenue? So what product, and it's over the entire year. So our sales data is an array of data frames right now. All right, so we'll get rid of that. And let's see, we want to uh, add our equation here. So we can, in case we need to reference it. All right, so what do we need, need to do 
to handle this? Well, first of all, we want something uh, such that all of our data, all of our sales data is in one big data frame instead of 12 individual data frames inside of our array. So if we look at sales, this is an array of all of these different data frames, right? So this is one data frame, right? And there are 6,299 items in there, it looks like. So starting at zero, that looks like 6,300. Right, 6,300 rows by five columns. So there's about you know 6,000 per month, right? But we want this all in one table. So what's one, one way we can do that with, with uh, pandas? We could say pd.concat. And this is going to allow us to concatenate all of the sales data into one big uh, data frame, right? So we can say, we can call this all sales. So this is one big data frame instead of an array of the 12 based on months. Now we had to keep them separate because we were doing monthly data before, but now we're doing product data over the course of the entire year. So it makes sense to join all this stuff together. So we can look at that. We can say all sales dot head. That doesn't really tell us much though. It, it gives us this list here. Um, if we run it like this, we can see that there are 72,000, right? So that's, you know, 6,000 times 12 months approximately. Okay, uh, we could also, if we wanted to know just how many entries there were, we can use shape or length, a lot of different ways. Uh, so there we go, we, get, we have our sales all in one data frame. So now let's solve the problem. So I'm gonna make a markdown, uh, escape, and then M and then press enter at our divider and we've got solutions 12 and 15 right so that's using markdown that's using an h1 tag All right so what do we have here uh, let's make a data frame and we're gonna we're gonna copy all sales because we're going to add some modifications and we're going to drop some things we don't need for this problem set but we might need them in the other problem sets so always make a copy if you need to but we do want to be con concerned with ram and and try not to use up too much ram with big data sometimes that's an issue uh, with this we don't have enough records where it's really a huge concern but it's something to be aware of and that's also one of the reasons i like to have my uh everything i'm running linux here and i um, have my CPU processor here, my RAM, and we saw the network stuff. So I like having that graphed up there so I can tell what's going on. All right, so I have this data frame. I make a copy. Um, what do I need to do with it once I have it? Let's drop the things that we don't want. So df.drop. Uh, we don't need the date. We don't need the invoice number. All right, let's, let's go ahead and see what all sales looks like. So we have a little view. So you can look at the columns a little bit. All right, so invoice number, customer ID, date, product ID, quantity. So what do we need? We need price and quantity. To get price, we need product ID. And then we need the sales tax, so we need the customer ID for that. So, so this is, again, the hardest one. Once we get this one, the other ones will be very, very easy. All right, so <clears throat> we wanna drop the date and what else? Invoice number, we don't need that. And this is just to conserve memory. It's a good habit to get into. For this particular uh, data set, it's not a huge deal, like I said. So uh, we want to drop that. We want to say it's along axis number one. And we want to say in place equals true. Right? And then we can check out our data frame. Invoice number axis. Do that again. Okay. All right, so we eliminated the columns we don't need. Now we just have to go through and uh, basically do everything we, we did before for the monthly um, the monthly set of data. Let me run this. There we go. Uh, so get monthly revenue, right? So it's basically all this stuff. We made a copy. We dropped the date and the invoice. And so we can copy and paste this and kind of get to where we want to want to be a little bit more quickly since we already did it once uh, let's go down and paste this ok 
Okay, so shift tab on indent. Okay, so our data frame, we're gonna merge the data frame products, the left on product ID. All right, so we've got a product ID and, and on the right index of the products data frame. So that's gonna give us the, the, the uh, additional fields. This is gonna give us costs and price. Right, so we can do this one at a time by commenting this stuff out. Right, and then down here we can have just a DF as we test. Okay, so that gives us price and cost. Those are the only two elements in that uh, data frame. So I could have selected them individually here. I could say price and cost, but I don't really need to do that because those are the only two elements in there. <clears throat> but either way works. All right, uh, then what do we do? We wanna drop product ID because we don't need it anymore because our equation relies on quantity, uh, price, and then tax. We still need customer ID to get the tax information. All right, so we'll drop those. We run it, drop that table. Now what do we do? We're gonna merge into our data frame, customers, the state field. All right, and uh, we wanna get merge left on the left table, which is our current table, right? It's, it's this, the sales data. We're gonna merge on the column customer ID and on the customer's data frame, it's on the index. So right index is true. How are we gonna merge? It's going to be an outer merge. And that just makes sure we get all the entries even if there isn't a match. Uh, and then, well, let's just see what we have first. So there we get state. Now state is really the abbreviation. So first, we can get rid of the customer ID. We don't need it because we just needed that to get the state. All right, now we need to change the name because we had the error before where there was a collision between this table and then we merged on another table or data frame rather. Uh, both of them had the column state and so that we were getting some issues there. So if we rename this column to state, so we say data frame dot rename columns and then you just specify a dictionary. What is the name of the column now and what would you like it to be named? And then in place true means it's gonna modify the current data frame. All right, so we change that to abbreviation. Then the next step, we merge our data frame in with the state's data frame, and the left merge is on abbreviation. So it's on this column, and then the right merge is on the index. So remember our state's data, fr uh, data frame, the index was the two letter abbreviation code, and then the value in the actual data frame, there's only one column, and it is the state long name. And, it, and that column's just called state. So we'll do a merge here. And here we have the state column, it pops in here, and this is the long name of the state, all right? So we don't need abbreviation anymore, we needed this long name because the, the long name is used in our tax rates data table, all right? So this, this is, once you get the hang of this, it's not that bad. You, you, the first time through, really understanding how everything works, uh, it takes a little while, but now you can see you're just adding things at will and it becomes very fast. Uh, so we, we can drop abbreviation. We don't need that anymore. Uh, now we wanna add the tax rate because that's the whole point. That's what we really want. Uh, so let's get the tax rates. So we wanna merge our current data frame with the tax rates data frame. Uh, what part of the tax rates? The tax rates have some extra information that we don't necessarily need. Um, we just want the rate column. So the rate is the actual tax rate. And so this is the data frame we want to merge. So we're gonna get a field called rate and we're gonna merge left on the state. So whatever column here, whatever we have state here, that's going to take what's on the tax rates uh, data frame and, and merge at that index because we have right index is true. So whatever is in that rate column is gonna be added here, all right? And, and get, again, remember this is 72,000 columns uh, or rows, right? So this is, this is a big data frame. This is all of our sales data. 
and so we're adding this for every single entry now there's a lot of duplication in that but then this makes our final calculation really simple all right so uh, we run that and we get rate so now we can drop uh, well, let's change rate to tax because that's that's what we call it in our equation. We're going to call that tax. So we change that table name to tax, and then we can drop state because we don't need that anymore. We just needed the tax. And now we have a nice table of all of our entries that we can actually really work with. All right. Well, it looks like we got some NANs here. Let me take a look and see what happened there. Um, when did that start? We got some NANs there, price and costs. Mm. Quantity. We've got some issues here with the index too. So something happened. Looks like there's a difference in the state data or something. Drop abbreviation. Let's back up a second. <clears throat> okay, so this looks like we're good. All right, and then what happened here? We merged state data. Okay, so that's the problem. Uh, NAN. So we merged our current data frame and we merged states left on abbreviation and right index on true. We got the state. these be in a n All right, well let's explore that a little bit um, let's see df let's find all of the items in df where quantity is is in a Okay, so none of them are in A there. And then if I do this one, we do have a bunch of NA. How many do we have? Just these. Oh, so this has to do uh, something with tax. Um, so NA. So let's see, if there's not a state, right, that should be that should be the empty string rather than NA. So okay, let's before we we join state, let's look and see abbreviation or that's NA. Okay, so none of those are NA. Let's look at our state's data frame. All right, and we do have this one that's blank at the bottom, so that's correct. Uh, what are we missing here? So the current data frame has. abbreviations so that's Texas none of them are in a and we're going to do a merge all 
left on abbreviation right. is it because it's an outer So how many do we have before the merge? 7,000, 72,964, five columns. Let me run it this way. So, oh, there's more after. Oh, so this is, so the outer merge is matching So there would be records where there isn't a product ID. I wonder why that would happen with the outer. I'll have to look into that. Um, but you see kind of how we're, we're analyzing, you know, trying to figure out what happened. We backtracked. Uh, so the outer merge is uh, causing an issue here. The default is an inner merge. So there's something to do with, so on the left data frame, if this data frame, uh, we're trying to match on the state, so that would be like Texas, and on the left, that's our, um, oh, abbreviation, here we go. So state goes to abbreviation. So yeah, on the left, we're trying to match abbreviation to on the right uh, the index of states data frame so we should have if there is one of these abbreviations um, so what if we say is in States data frame and the index. So we're looking in our data frame. We're going to look for the column data frame abbreviation. We're going to see if that's in uh, the list, right? And that should give us a list of all of these values 72,989. Let's find and see if there's one that's not. So these are, this is kind of a, a Boolean. This creates a Boolean series. And we can't, I want the opposite of this. So I can't use the keyword not because that is a reserved Python keyword for Boolean values. So pandas overwrote this tilde character and we can use that and that basically negates this series. What would be a true in this series is now a false and what would be a false in this series is now true. Okay, so there are no values that are not in our list. Well, I'll have to explore why that's the case. I'm not sure why that would be the case. So if this is adding additional values to our data frame, right? Because here we have, let's look at our data frame again. So this is before the merge. We have 72,964. And so that's how many we should end up with. But for some reason, when we're doing an outer join, we're getting more. And so these are invalid. I'm not sure why that's doing that. So, but anyway, at any rate, the uh, so this should be an inner join. Uh, we just have to make sure that the values are the same. So that's, yeah, 72,964. So I'll, I'll look into that and get back with you uh, in the comments and why that's the case. Uh, I'm sure I'm just forgetting how the differences between the joins. Uh, <clears throat> so p.merge. So we got abbreviation. Now we have the state field. 
right? So now we don't need abbreviation, so we can get rid of that. All right, so once we did that, we can get our tax rate. And so we're gonna merge left on tax and right index true, 72,964. 72,964, so that's good. So we didn't use the outer merge there. Um, <clears throat> then we rename rate to tax. That's good. Now we can drop state because we only needed state to get uh, tax. And reset the index. So we see the index gets a little squirrely. We can reset it. But then it takes the old index in case we need it and it adds it to as a column. Uh, we don't need that, so we can drop that. And run that. And so now we have everything we need. So we have price, quantity, and one plus the tax. We also have cost. Um, we don't need that right now. So we're not returning anything from a function. So this is basically, you know, we could add this as a column. This is revenue, right? So we could say, if we wanted to, we could say DF and we want to add a column revenue and we want to set that equal uh, to this stuff. Like that would be one thing we could do if we didn't sum it, right? And we'd have this revenue column but we don't really need to do that because the whole point is we just want to get the sum of these values. So we could just sum this revenue column, but you know, why do we need to add the column and then just sum it, right? Unless we're, if we're not going to be really looking at this data, then we don't need it. So <clears throat> instead of adding the column here, we just need, you know, the sum. So the result, right? So the final sum is the sum of this column, right? This was the column we added. So the column is really a series. So it's a series of all these values and all pandas series have a dot sum method which will add up all the values. So that gives us the total sum and that is the total sum of the revenue. All right, so this is going to be uh, the total sum of the revenues for uh, products. All right, so we actually, oh, we do need our product ID because uh, we don't want to drop that yet because the revenue we want to find the revenue for the um, the the highest revenue for our products so which product has the highest revenue so let's not drop our product ID yet so we're gonna get rid of that we don't want to drop that okay so now we still have products so kind of what we want to do here is we want to aggregate all this information so let's we do need this revenue field. Let's go ahead and add that back in here. Uh, so this will be DF revenue. But we're not gonna take the sum of all of those. So what we were calculating was the revenue for the entire year when we got the sum, right? That's not what we want. We want the revenue for uh, fidgets and the gigaws and, and so all of the individual little product IDs. So I want to collect these together, all of the fidgets and sum those together, right? So this is our data frame. Um, so how can we do that? Let's do this on the next line. So let's say product revenues uh, is going to equal df.groupby so we're grouping information in this data frame and we're grouping things together based on uh, repeated properties. So repeated items in a particular column. So what is the column that we're looking for these re repeated properties? Uh, the product ID. So we're grouping by repetitions within product ID. So <clears throat> let's say group by product ID. ID there we go and uh, we'll just take a look at this um, DF group by oh there's no underscore group by all right 
So this is a special type of uh, object. It's not a data frame. It can't just be printed nicely like this because it's sort of, it's an aggregation of a collection of all of these and all of these sub values. So, so it's sort of several different data frames. Um, and what we want to do is uh, for the, the revenue fields in all of them, so we'll say we want to access the revenue fields. That's the only one we're interested in. So that's uh, revenue. We want to sum all of those together for each of those groups. So this, this categorizes everything into groups. So we have all of these fidget, fidgets. Uh, so it's kind of its its own sort of data frame and then we want to access the revenue column in that group and sum them all right so this is going to sum it for each individual group so we group them all together by product id and then we take this the revenue column and sum it but it's going to be grouped by this product id all right and if we run this Product revenues. Okay, so here is sort of a, a series, right? It's type float64, which is NumPy, and we can reset the index, and this will give it more of a a data frame feel, right? So this well, this is a data frame. So uh, it gives us a new index and now we have product ID here and then revenue. And then we could say, uh, if we wanted to, we could set the index back as the product ID. So this will keep it as a, a data frame even though it's pretty close to a series. So set index and set that to product ID. In place equals true. All right, so there's the revenue by product, right? So that group by is the critical piece there. We grouped all of these sort of into their own individual data frames, and then we accessed the revenue and summed it, right? And so our, our resulting table was still grouped by that product ID, but we summed up all of those columns and into this nice little table here. All right, so what is this? Uh, this is a big number. Let's we want to sort by that, right? So product reviews, uh, revenues. Dot sort by. Let's do it up here. Uh, sort values um, by the column revenues. Right in place true. Okay, so now the one that's largest uh, should be at the bottom, All right? So that's to the sixth power, right? 1.245. So it's sorted. Now we need the readable version, though, right? So the readable version. Let's go ahead and add that column. We're gonna add uh, revenue readable. And we're gonna set that equal to product revenues, revenue. And uh, what do we want to do that? We, we want to run it through our function that converts the number into a pretty string. So we have our lambda. We use our dot apply lambda x. x is going to be every single one of these revenue values. And what do I want to return? I want to return a format string with uh, a dollar sign beforehand. I want to inject X into my string, but have some formatters. So the colon says, I'm gonna add some formatters. What formatters do I want? I wanna add commas between every three place values and then add two floating point decimals. So rounded to two floating point decimals there. All right, and uh, that should be it. So there's our revenue readable. And so we see that the fidget had 
one million two hundred forty five thousand six hundred ninety three right so we can take a look and see where we're at here that's correct and then the least would be 179,000 175.90 179.175.90 okay so that was the hardest one again we had to do all the stuff with taxes merging multiple tables uh, so now the rest of them are easy so let's uh, finish up very quickly here we have a, uh, a markdown cell we're gonna say this is problems that that was um, 12 and 15 so this is 13 and 16 all right and we'll make that an h1 tag and then this will be an h2 tag so what is the actual problem we're trying to solve go back up to the top so this is number 13 All right, so what product sold the best? That's number 13 and worst. That's number 16 in terms of quantity. So that's the total quantity sold. And what was the number? So uh, for this, we don't really need any equation. It's just quantity. And what's nice about this is we don't really need hardly any of this. We just need all, all of this uh, the sales data, right? Um, we don't have to do much here because the quantity is right in this. Uh, let's go to the solutions. Uh, so make this markdown, enter. Oh, we're not doing the, the line for solutions. So we just say, try to stay consistent here. So solutions 13 and 16. I didn't add the horizontal rule for the other solutions. I don't think so. All right, so let's get to the code. So we have our data frame and this is just all sales, right? And so we see that we have a product ID and we have a quantity. So we're going to do a group by again on the quantity and then just sum all the quantities. And that's really all we have to do here. So this one's a whole lot easier. So we can say, um, product quantities. What did I call this one up here? Product revenues. Yeah, so this is product quantities. Uh, this is going to equal our data frame dot group by. What are we grouping by? Product ID. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, we could we could drop the stuff that we don't need first. Um, we'll go ahead and do this, but we're grouping by product ID. We want the quantity, right? So that's the row that we want, or the column rather. So we want the quantity here. And this is what we're going to sum up. So this is basically going to be a collection of data frames grouped. Uh, these records are going to be grouped by them all matching fidget, for example. And then we're going to sum all those up. So we want to sum the quantity fields up. So this is where we're selecting the column quantity. And we want to say dot sum. So that's going to be the product quantities. And we can take a look at that. And so these are all of our items and then the total quantities and do sort of the same stuff we've we've done. Let's do so this is a series. So this is the index and the value. So we can go ahead and make this into a data frame by saying product quantities. All right, we can just say dot reset index at the end here. And that makes it sort of a data frame. And we don't really need the index. We want to make product ID the index. This just makes it a data frame instead of an, uh, a series. So we can say oops, product quantities dot um, set index. What do we want to 
gonna set it to product ID. What axis? One in place equals true. Uh, I was removing a column. I'm not removing a column. So, <clears throat> so here, set the index. What column do I want to set it to? Product ID and then in place true. So it modifies it. Um, what else? We need to make it readable, right? So we want to add a field uh, quantity readable. So this is going to equal whatever's in the quantity column. So this is a series, and we're gonna apply a function to all of the items in this series. What are we applying? A nice lambda. X is going to be the individual quantity that we get from each one of these. And then what do we want it to be? We want it to be a format string, and we want it to just be the value X but we want to format it with commas. Now these are counts, so we don't really need dot zero zero. Right? And this should add that column to, and we've got these nice little commas. So these are all strings, and these are all integers. Right? And these are NumPy types, so that's integer 64. And these are all strings, so they're object type. All right, product quantities. So that's good enough. Uh, then the, the last one is make it a uh, markdown. Now let's add the problems. This is going to be problems 14 and 17. What are problems 14 and 17? Let's scroll back up and find that. 14 here. What product was the most profitable over the entire year? Gross profit. And so let's add our gross profit equation in here. All right, um, so let's say, make another markdown cell. This is the solutions. We'll jump right into it. For 14 and 17. All right, so what do we wanna do? We're gonna make a copy of all of our sales data like we normally do. We've got a data frame. We'll say uh, all sales data. So this is all of the sales data for the year, right? We had. Originally we had sales, which was an array of the monthly sales data, but then we concatenated all of that into one data frame, all sales. Uh, then we can remove the items that we don't need. So what do we need here? We need price and cost and quantity. So quantity is already in here by default. We can, we can take a look at what we have. Uh, what, what do we need to get price and cost? We need product ID. So we can just get rid of uh, the stuff we don't need. So data frame equals or uh, data frame dot drop. What are we dropping? Invoice number uh, dropping customer ID <clears throat> and dropping date and this is going to be on axis one. in place equals true. All right, so shift enter, we run it. So we're left with product ID and, and quantity, basically. So what we wanna to add to that is we wanna look up the product ID in our products uh, data frame and merge such that every single time we have a fidget, 
we want a, the products data frame, we want the price and cost added to our column here. It'll give us a lot of duplication in our data, but that's fine because it makes our calculation really easy. So <clears throat> we have DF uh, DF equals PD dot merge. What are we merging? We are merging um, our current data frame with the products. All right uh, uh, on the the left on. So what is the column that we are merging left on? This is product ID. And then we're merging on the right index. So we say right index is true. All right. Found on Axis. All right, let's see. Oh, I forgot to do copy, that's why. All right, I got a kernel restart and run because I messed up my original copy of all sales. So you gotta be careful about that sometimes. I'm gonna restart and run all. <clears throat> Let's take a second. Let me see that star there means it's thinking it's going through and running all of these in order. And there we go. So now I make a copy. So this is a copy of the data frame. And so now I can run this again. So it wouldn't let me drop the column again because I was doing it in place and I had already dropped the column, so they didn't exist. So that was the issue. Uh, so here, we're gonna merge. So we get price and cost. So that's what we want. And all we need is price minus the cost times the quantity, right? So let's go ahead and say, you know, DF. Yeah, we'll just keep that there. And then here we need product gross profits, right? So we're gonna use that DF frame, product gross profits. So this is gonna be df.groupby. We wanna group by our product, right? And then we're gonna perform this calculation and sum them all together, right? So what are we grouping by? We're grouping by product ID. And then what is the thing that we want uh, to sum? So I guess technically up here we need to add a gross profit column, right? And then what we would do here is we would access gross profit and say dot sum, right? But we don't have this column, right? We need a column here that says gross profit. So we can add that here. We can say df dot uh, or df gross profit. How do we calculate this? Well, we have the equation. It's price minus cost minus uh, times quantity, and we have that here. We have quantity, price, and cost. So we can just say uh, df price. Right, and we need our parentheses here, minus DF costs in parentheses, and then uh, times quantity. Oops. All right, so that gives us our gross profit column. And, if, and this is the, just the profit for the individual sale line item, right? So this is just fidget quantity, 16 of them. So what was the gross profit on just this transaction? Well, we're up, up selling fidgets by almost 100%. They cost us this, and this is we, what we charge the customer. So we're making about uh, six, seven bucks on each one. And so there's 16 of them, right? And so that's almost $100. And that's just that one line item. And what we want to do is go through, group them all by product ID, and then access that gross profit column on all of those and sum those together. Uh, 
uh, equals. So this gives us that series. If we want to make it a data frame, we can just say reset index and that adds an index. And then we can say uh, set index to product ID. might be a way to do that inside a reset index I would have to look at the documentation uh, but at any rate um, this gives us the data frame that we're, we're looking for um, and we have to do in place equals true to get the index to be set to product ID okay so here's our index now here's a gross profit and so now we want to do the thing we've done for all of these basically apply our method to make it look nice so we want to add a column. Uh, this is gross profit. Uh, re uh, readable. And that's going to equal the gross profit column. And we're going to apply our method. So this is going to be a lambda x. x is going to be each value in gross profit. And what do we want to return? We want to return a format string with X in it. Gross profit is measured in dollars, so we're going to put a little dollar sign and a space out in front. We're going to inject X, but we want to format it. So we use the colon to tell us, uh, to tell Python that we're going to use some formatters inside of this format string. We want to use commas and dot two F. So we want to round to two decimal places, All right? And so, can run that and now we got this gross profit readable we might, might want to sort so sort values what do we want to sort by gross profit All right and then uh, we've got this nice little table and so we have bobble at 151,427.10 cents. Uh, so Bobble had the least annual revenue. Of, uh, let's see, 175. Oh, no, that's revenue. Do, 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 do. Did we sort? Let's see, what do we get here? Uh, So most profitable is number 14. And least profitable is number 17. All right, and so gross profit is what we're calculating, price minus cost. So price minus cost times the quantity should be the gross profit. Okay, so that looks good. We calculate all the gross profits. We group by the product ID, get the gross profit, sum it all up, and sort by gross profit. So we see this is the least, and this is the most. Okay, so we're looking for a number 14 widget. Fidget, the most gross profit. So we've got an error in our calculation here. So it didn't. Oh, it's our sorting. That's the problem. I was expecting these to be sorted. I didn't do in place sort. Yeah, those little details, they mess with you. In place, true. Now it's sorted, so that, that makes more sense. These are in increasing now. So, okay, trinket 120, 162.84. Uh, let's see, number 14, or 17 is the least. Um, so, 120, 162.84. And then fidget, uh, 561, 638, 40. 
So fidget 561-638-40. Okay, so that is the solution to 14 and 17. Uh, and then we can do the same thing we did last time. We're done with the whole uh, set of problems now, so we can kind of put them all together in one nice table, just as a little last final exercise. Press escape, press M to go into markdown mode, press enter, and I can say problems uh, let's see, what is this, 12 through 17 in one table. Okay, so what do we want to do here? We're going to have a data frame, and we're going to say pd.merge. What do we want to merge? We want to merge uh, the first table we had which was revenue, right? So that's product revenues. And then the next table is product quantities. So I'm gonna merge product revenues and product quantities. And left on and right on is both gonna be the index. So we say index left equals true and index right equals true. So there's our data frame as it stands. Uh, left index. And right index. Okay, so we join those two tables together. Uh, now we need to do one more merge. DF equals PD dot merge. <clears throat> and we want to get merge our current DF data frame with the last column, which would be product gross profits. All right, and then the same thing here left index, right index true. Okay, so that's our big table, and we only want the readable values, so we can drop the ones we don't want to look at. So df.drop, what are we dropping? We are dropping revenue, we are dropping quantity, there we go, I spell it, and uh, gross profit. Okay, uh, what well, axis? This is axis one, and in place equals true. All right, so there you have it. This is all in one table, and we might want to sort by what might be the most imp uh, important thing to whoever we're talking to. So df dot sort values. We'd want to do this uh, before we drop the columns. So we want to df dot sort values by uh, probably gross profit, I would think. And in place equals true. And so you see currently they are a little bit out of order. So gross profit. So this, this should switch uh, switch some things around a little bit so the trinket should move to the top after we've done this and there it is so everything's sorted here and we've removed all the columns we don't need and this is something presentable that you can present to you know whoever assigned you this task okay so uh hopefully you learned a lot uh, sorry for some of the hiccups there but it, it's a learning opportunity because that stuff happens um you forget how things work periodically and you have to look it up in the documentation and you kind of you, you got some insight into how you analyze you know what the error message is saying and, and how to look it up and how to figure it out and how to debug it so uh, hopefully that helps and that's all we have for this video